I am Steven Edholm from SkillCult.com. One of the most dangerous things we do with an axe is bucking, and I've come up with a simple device to help people train that skill safely and effectively. Today I'm going to tell you what it is, why it's a great idea, ideas on how to use it to best effect, and some options on slapping one together. Now I'm not recommending that you build one of these and use it all the time to buck. In fact, I don't think you should, and we'll talk about that more. So this is a temporary expedient for training. First, results of the name game. I asked on social media and made a separate YouTube video to ask with help for coming up with names for this and for people to vote on the ones I already had. And here are some of the runners up and more interesting ones. Bucking wall, buck stop, bucking board, chop stop, shin shield, profil waxis. <laughs> we gotta use that somewhere. Uh, or of course profile axis. So out of those, my top picks were buck stop and bucking board. Uh, bucking board just because it's really descriptive. But I think we have to go with buck stop. It got a lot of votes. It's a clever play on words that actually will stand the test of time, right? Like so, it's not referencing something that's you know current that's going to be over and then no one will understand what you mean when you say it. Okay, the axe cordwood challenge is in year three. Over the first two years, we had a number of cuts, maybe as many as like six or around there, and most of those were are done while bucking to the feet and ankles and that's both because you do a lot of bucking like that's the majority of the work is the bucking then you're standing like right here behind the log and you're essentially almost swinging the axe at your feet counting on the log to stop it and for nothing to go wrong now good instruction only goes so far like I can tell someone you know do this like I could draw the lines out and say you know even number the hits say hit here then hit here then hit here then hit there but if a person doesn't have the coordination and familiarity with the tool you just can't carry out that plan and some things can't be taught you can't teach that physical memory and the familiarity this allows people to work through that phase of getting familiar with the tool, figuring out how far it is to the sharp end so that you know you don't overstrike too far. I'm trying to demonstrate an overstrike without messing up my axe and blowing it. Or you know, under striking like this and hitting back here and then, you know, the axe is headed in your direction. Getting the angle right. It takes a while to get the wobble out of your swing and people will tend to over aim and try to steer and grip it tight and try to steer their way. And then you end up, you know, doing this instead of, uh, you know, chopping into the log like you're supposed to. Then there's just knowing what's going to go wrong. If you cut a notch on one side and then flip the log over or get to the other side and you're cutting through and you get near the end, it's really easy to misjudge how far you have to go and have the axe come through the wood and keep going with uh, quite a bit of force. Many times I've just thought, you know, I wasn't that close and then there goes the axe right through the wood. But it takes, you know, some accidents and time to kind of figure all that stuff out. So there's the safety thing is obvious, right? Most of those things that can go wrong, like almost everything is you're going to be protected. It's extremely safe. But the other thing is that relieves people of a kind of anxiety and allows you to experiment more. The last thing, for instance, I'd want someone to do who's just starting out and doesn't feel, you, you can tell there's just not that kind of physical confidence going yet, is to work on, you know, speed and their technique. And I don't mean speed like getting the job done fast, I mean acceleration of the head, so essentially power. Because, you know, the ax is only so heavy and the way you can make it cut faster is essentially to swing it faster. And with small axes, like I usually recommend, like a 28 inch handle with a two and a half pound head this is a two and a quarter so it's even more true they require a little bit of snap to get them to cut well so if I let the axe kind of there's like an inch and if I just give it a little snap and it's not even that much it's going to go in a lot deeper but the last thing I would do is put someone less experienced in front of a log like this and tell them to hit it harder that's like a recipe for disaster but this you could say okay go along the log just walk along the log in every inch just hit hit the log and work on this kind of like physical technique of this like physical efficiency and snap to get that thing to cut and all of that can be done safely and how many times have you done something physical where you get nervous and you overthink it and you're timid and hesitant and, and then you screw up right an axe should be used with like a level of confidence and this has to do with safety too so that you're in control of the ax and you're not, you know, pussyfooting around. You're like, I'm gonna chop that, I'm gonna chop it at this angle, and you do it. You don't, you know, stand extra far back and, and do, you know, this, right? You wanna like get into a comfortable position and use the thing with some authority. Obviously, if you don't have 
that uh, feeling isn't there yet and you swing the ax and you really don't know where it's going to end up, then you really can't do that and then it can actually be dangerous. So this is a way that people can get really familiar with the swing of the ax and the feel of the ax and get all that coordination down and then we can get rid of it and move on. Okay, so that's all the good stuff. What about the bad stuff? Caveats and downsides. First of all, I would hate to see people use this as an excuse to be sloppy. The point is to use it to best advantage to train and increase skills and form good habits even too. And we'll talk about that in just a second, but it would be easy to kind of just approach the thing and say, oh, well, I'm safe, you know, and you can just like swing away at it. No, do the same thing you would do if you're really bucking a log, you know, try to use good foot positioning. Like for me, that's gonna be, if the cut's here, I want my feet a certain width apart. I wanna be pretty close to the log. I wanna have a plan and I wanna to try to execute that plan. I don't wanna, you know, hit the ax like down into the dirt at the bottom of the cut. And I don't want it to come over the top. When I get close to the end of the cut, I don't wanna swing it and have it come through and hit the backstop unless I'm planning for that to happen. So anytime any of that stuff happens, if this was real life, where, where are my legs and what might have happened in that situation? So use the thing with intent, which brings me to number two, which is I feel pretty confident that this will cause people to form bad habits and a false sense of security, which obviously could be dangerous once the thing is gone. I noticed just testing the thing, cutting one log, that I started getting kind of sloppy about being conscious of my, my footing placement and where I was and my follow through, which just means that, you know, if the ax keeps going in a certain direction or something happens and it, you know, goes somewhere, am I gonna be in the way? Right away, I started kind of losing that presence of mind and that uh, edge consciousness or edge awareness to keep track of my follow through. And of course, you could easily develop this false sense of security where you just feel like, oh, this is a safe activity. And yeah, that's great for building that physical confidence, but you don't want it to be unrealistic when this thing is gone. And I think it's gonna be important for new trainees to make a break, like a specific break and say, I'm not using this anymore. Make this an era that's over and you're in the new era. Make this like hard mental break and hard reboot into high safety alert mode with your little safety officer and your head turned on always watching your follow through, keeping track of your footing placement at all times. You know, obviously I think the benefits outweigh that danger, but I do think it's a very real danger. I feel confident that this is what's gonna happen. Like when people use this, in certain ways it will cause them to become lax. Now, if you're training someone else, you can be the sort of guardian angel that knows what's going on and keep, you know, getting them into good habits because these habits could definitely stick. You want to not get into the habit of, like I see a lot of people chopping, just kind of standing flat footed right here behind the log. Uh, that doesn't work for me. I want a, a, a nice wide stance so that if I if the ax comes through the log, it's probably already going to be past my, my feet really quickly, like as soon as it comes through the log. And uh, the last thing I want to do is stand right behind the cut in case I go over the top or it comes through. You don't want people to get in the habit of kind of like, you know, working like this with their foot right there and then coming to this side and, and doing that sort of thing like that. You know, there's different ideas about what, what the best way to do that is. You know, I have my own ideas, but I'm just saying that there's definitely a lot of ways that are bad to do that. And you want to keep an eye on that and always keep emphasizing follow through, even though the follow through is stopped, you know, by this board. So before we move on to some uh, specific design possibilities, let's talk about the best way to use this thing. Uh, I could definitely see this being extremely useful in a uh, class type of environment, especially long term. The same kids every week or the same people every week, or you have like maybe a seven day course or a 10 day course in axmanship, then I would make one of these for each person if possible, if it's practical, and then paint it like paint it white so that every cut shows up and then that gives this person like a history of their use of the thing. I also think a great idea if you were making the thing with cheap or recycled materials, maybe make it with pallets or something like that. At some point have the student run through a test, say, you know, cut two logs like this all the way without hitting the buck stop at all. And if you can do that, you move on to the next phase. We do a hard reboot into like high safety alert mode and take that and burn it. And it gives you like almost almost a ritualistic breaking point where you're like, okay, I, I have accomplished something. 
we're leaving this you know era behind we're entering a new era and just get the person into that new mindset and then unlearn any bad habits okay so let's talk about some design possibilities and a design in general this is based on putting a larger log as recommended for instance by morris kahansky and others behind the log you're chopping so you have this backing log and that way you know if the axe goes through you're somewhat protected i think these work better for a couple of reasons um, one is that you can stand closer to the log which with a short handled axe to me is much more comfortable i want to be situated pretty close over the log so that when i make these cuts i'm making them somewhat vertically like the the cut ends up being fairly vertical like that if you're standing further back like this you either have to lean over or you kind of end up reaching or you end up uh, cutting the, the V at more of an angle like this. In terms of safety, it's taller and it's flatter. So that means it's gonna stop more stuff than a rounded lower log. If you have a log that's actually 11 inches in diameter like this, uh, that's not gonna be that fun to move and then you have to either move the wood to it or whatever. It's just gonna be a little bit more work to get the thing set up. All that said, a backing log is fine if that's what you have. Even if you have one, like there's one behind the camera there that's like eight inches, uh, that would be fine for cutting stuff like this. Still very useful. I just think this is a little bit better. Another thing this offers is you can put a platform along the bottom here, which is gonna help you know protect the toe of your ax if uh, you strike that little bit too low, which I keep failing to do for some reason. Oh well, I just can't screw up. This probably would have taken me 10 minutes to build, including going and getting the materials. Overall, it took an hour to build the first four, I would guess, but that's because I had to keep running around the property, uh, gathering pieces of wood to use. If I had just gone out and grabbed the first couple of convenient th things, this plank and this piece of plywood, there's a couple of two by fours back here. Super simple, screw it together with a screw gun. You know, everybody's different in what you want to do with your time and all that, but I wouldn't, make this into like some kind of a design opportunity or design challenge until you use it. The best one is the one that actually gets built because it can be slapped together so quickly. Any of these are effective. It's just that, you know, you might be able to improve it a little bit, but find out what you need to improve first. Like I had all kinds of ideas about what might go wrong, but once I just slapped these together and tried a couple of them, I was like, yeah, none of that matters all that much. If it takes, you know, 10 minutes to assemble with a screw gun, it takes like three minutes to take apart and then you can modify it or adapt it or add stuff or just build another one later. They don't have to be very strong. They don't have to be out of nice material. It doesn't really have to be fancy. So let's take a look at a few of these things. All right, let's look at some options for building these things. First and foremost, a log. It works okay. Um, you know, it's a little bit heavy and cumbersome. Not everyone has access to a large enough log. Whatever, if you got a log, use it, try it, it works. Uh, it's recommended by a lot of people for good reason. Now the reason I built all these is just to show how quick you could slap them together in different ways from whatever junk is laying around. This board was just sitting here. It already had these two by two screwed on it. I don't know what it was from. I just put some shelf brackets on it. Boom, done. You might think, well, would the log like roll off these brackets or something or that cause a problem? I thought that too, when I used it, not a problem. So if you have two pieces of plywood, you know, you can't just screw them together because it'd be too flimsy. So I screwed this from the bottom and then I just added a two by two here, screwed this way and this way, and that's plenty. It's actually really, really stout. Uh, the only problem with this one is it's too tall, so you'd have to rip it down to 10 or 11 inches here. And again, this is just something that was sitting around the homestead. I don't know what it was from, but it was a piece of plywood with this two by four screwed to it. I don't know, the stuff accumulates on a homestead. So I just grabbed a couple of pieces of plywood that were laying in the yard, a couple screws, done. Again, works fine. It's kind of flimsy yeah but it's you know that's going to definitely stop an axe okay this one's a 2 by 12 and it's 11 inches wide i mean it's, you know dimensional lumber so it's 11 inches wide added a couple pieces of a 2 by 4 here just to strengthen it up a little bit it's kind of nice to have this front platform because it protects the toe of your axe in fact there's already you know cuts in the the bottom of this this is pretty nice to have this front on here and an option is that you could build it without the fr with the front and then cut it off later if you don't want it so instagram user watch your follow through uh suggested maybe making one without the front so that it was easy to move so that if you're chopping you can just kind of slide it up and down behind the log and that it be cantilevered back slightly to shift the um you know the center of gravity so it doesn't fall over frontwards so 
I built one of these. This is the only one that took me any significant amount of time because as soon as I came at it with an idea and said, okay, well, I want it to be this long and I want to do this design, then suddenly somehow, even though there was no really difficult or insurmountable obstacles, it just ended up taking four times as long. So that's kind of my point about just grabbing whatever you have and slapping it together. So I would probably, if I was to build something like this, if you happen to have a piece of plywood that's a little wider, make the front shelf as well and use it. And then if you ever want to, you can just cut that off. As far as the length goes, I think the magic numbers are gonna be around five or five and a half and six and a half. And that's going to give you like the enough space to cut a certain number of notches. You know, these marks are at 16, so that gives you plenty of room here to chop where you're still, you know, protected. And this is a five foot piece right here. If it's another foot and a half out here, that's going to give you, you can make actually four cuts in the log instead of uh, three. Now, when I tested this, the height that I needed turned out to be 11. I would say 10 or 11 inches. And if you have, I mean, this one sloped forward, so that gives you a little bit of advantage. But even with this one, I would probably chamfer off this front edge like I did on this one. Because with that one, I found that it, just a few times I bumped the top of that uh, leading edge with the ax. So I got a skill saw and cut that off. You could also hew it off with an ax. Uh, I just wasn't sure if there was any nails in there, so I didn't want to use my ax. Now, if you uh, have a longer handled ax, you may need to stand a little bit further back and then you might be more likely to hit your handle on this. You know, in most cases, you're not really gonna damage your handle just whacking it a couple of times, and if it becomes a problem, then fix it. And in general, with designing these and building them, that would be my, my suggestion, is that your general approach is to don't solve problems before they're actually prop, real problems. You know, you could sit around and plan and design this stuff and come up with all kinds of possible solutions that are you know, overly complex and just really not necessary when you may not need them at all. I could probably take any one of these and just start using it and not really feel a need to uh, do any kind of real modification. Make it flimsy. If it starts falling apart, you know, add a piece to it and make it stronger. And then one last option for this, if there's no plywood front, you could always you know, take a piece of plywood and tuck it in here. It's not gonna be quite the same level of protection, but it may do the job. Now on this one, I chamfered the bottom at 10 degrees. This is a 10 degree back lean. I think that's a pretty good number. But I think in, in retrospect, you might just make a couple of blocks like this that are cut at 10 degrees, screw those on, and then just screw this right to it. And then you wouldn't have to have this uh, joint here be you know the same angle. And that would actually be a quicker solution. The other thing I would consider doing with this is uh, chamfering if the point of this is to be able to like move it easily, then chamfering this edge right here might help a lot in scooting it along the ground without kind of bulldozing and plowing into the ground and getting stuck. I think a pretty quick solution to that is just a, a horse farrier grass. I mean, even that little bit should help with that problem if, it, if it's a problem. If uh, anyone builds any of these and uses them for a while, let me know how it goes. And a quick summary, build a crappy one with whatever you have that's free, use it, get over it, stop using it, reboot your brain, turn on your little uh, internal safety officer and move on. That's my recommendation anyway.